Welcome back to the 90% Podcast. We're here, episode eight, with my man, Ryan Shaw. Ryan was, um, or actually, I went to high school with Ryan, and then Ryan was my assistant coach um, at McNair Middle School a few years ago, where we were so close to winning the district uh, championship, but we fell short in that championship game. How you doing today, Ryan? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm great, man. Good. I'm great. So we pretty much walked in the gym. I wanted to get right into this. Um, how, how have you been lately? Life's good. Family's good. Everyone's healthy. I mean, not too much to complain about. Still coaching, working. I mean, it's living life's a good, good life. Life's Sweet. good. Just got, where, where are you coaching currently? Uh, just doing my travel right now. A lot of the kids, you know, that I've been coaching the past four years were seniors. So I tried to make it to as many uh-huh. games as they could this year. So I didn't really want to be involved with one school so I could try to make it to as many as their games. So Absolutely. It was good year. All my seniors did a pretty strong year. So time to reset now. Time to go back to ninth grade and Filling for the next three, four years. So oh, yeah. I'm excited. So how would you describe your role in the basketball community? Are you a coach, trainer, mentor, a little bit of both, or what, what would you say your role is? Um, I try to, you know, pick in every category. I try to be a good coach, a mentor. You know, I know some of the kids we coach, especially at McNair, they don't grow up as good as we got to. So uh-huh. it's kind of nice to be able to be a good mentor for them outside of their home. And, you know, training is fun, too. Getting one-on-one sessions with kids are fun. So I try to just pick in every category, try oh, yeah. to enjoy it, learn from every single different thing. So uh-huh. it's been good. Sweet. And so you guys are starting your travel ball right now. Um, you guys haven't played any tournaments, you said, but you got your first one coming up this weekend? Yep, first yeah. one's this weekend at the big house. Cool. So. And what grades is your travel ball team right now? Ninth grade. Ninth grade? Mm-hmm. Only ninth? Yep. Cool. Sweet. Well, so the kind of topic that me and you came up with that we can both relate to is that we're young basketball coaches. So for those listening today, this conversation is pretty much going to be around just young basketball coaching, and we'll see where this conversation flows. But I want to talk advantages, disadvantages, um, maybe just things that Ryan sees from his perspective as a young coach. And then um, we'll kind of just ask some questions to the guest Ryan as usual all right sound good like a plan Ryan sound good to me (laughs) sweet so what is your first thing that pops in your head when you think of you being a young basketball coach do you look at it as an advantage or as a disadvantage personally I look at it as an advantage I feel like some of the older heads don't really like it Uh but in my (laughs) head I think you know it's an advantage because the main thing that you want from your team is to be able to trust you. And I feel like when you're younger and you can relate to a lot of things that they relate to in life, it, they trust you a lot more. Facts. When you, you know, me coaching the young, like freshmen, 10th graders, a lot of these kids want to go play college ball. So I treat them like adults. Uh-huh. You know, you talk to them like adults, you treat them like adults, say, sir, all those things. And, you know, they can relate a little bit more to you because you were just in their shoes not too long ago. Absolutely. So, and, you know, the game has changed so much in the past, you know, just four or five years. So a lot of these old heads that are coaching old style and stuff, a lot of kids don't want to go into a gym and get yelled at by a 50-year-old. Yeah. Like it's, it's, you know, and there's nothing wrong. It's not yeah. saying that what they're saying is wrong. Uh-huh. It's just, it's how you say it. So, Facts. you know, when you walk into a gym and, you know, sometimes you just don't want to get yelled at by an older person. No, definitely, that's definitely. That's at home, you know, you get yelled at by your parents. Exactly. Or something. So, you know, when you get yelled at by a younger kid, sometimes it's a little bit easier to relate to so I think it's an advantage because you can trust them but that also category has a little bit of some disadvantages to it as well uh-huh. being the younger you know because they think they can joke around a little more with oh you, yeah so and they start to of, trust you a little yeah, too much you maybe trust a little too much so you have to find that fine line and that's what I've been trying to learn the past couple years now that I'm getting a little bit older oh yeah to find that it, it line. definitely is a fine line and that's yeah. where I've been kind of in my career I don't still don't think I found it right I think there's days where I think I have the line and then there's days where I'm like oh man maybe I crossed it this way or this way so I think that's the fun part about being a young coach is just putting in all the hours of um experimenting right and figuring out what works what doesn't work and just that trial and error process is just fun yeah, right that's the big thing is trial and error I mean oh yeah learning and figuring out and Obviously, you you know a lot of older mentors that you've learned from, and you know I learned from a lot of people going from Cocoa Beach to Rockledge. Whew, what a jump! Like just the mentality and oh, learning bet. the two different types of the game. And so was was Cocoa Beach your first uh, coaching job? Right out of high school, Coach Ebright gave me the JV job straight out of high school, and I was there for about three years. Uh-huh. And then uh, when Coach Holmes took over the assistant job at FIT, that's when I went over to Rockledge, and Coach Tracy hired me over there. 
shout out to all those coaches he just right, mentioned. Yeah, all great coaches. And so. then uh, how and you so you said there was a di- like a night and day difference between the yeah just, just the mentality of the difference you know you know being in Cocoa Beach I mean we went there so you, we're a little bit more privileged over there uh-huh. so we don't want it as more as other kids do because we have a little bit easier of a way out. Going to Rockledge, a lot of the that, that's the kids' way out is basketball. So they're more dedicated and, you know, more willing to put the work in. Other uh-huh. than Cocoa Beach, where they know they don't have to use that. Yeah. So. No, I think privilege is part of it. I also think just the just the culture. You know what I mean? And the placebo effect of when you walk into something, you're gonna just kind of do what everybody else is doing. And if the years prior or before you aren't uh, working to the capacity that they should be and could be then you're not you're not looking up to that and looking yeah. forward to it whereas at Rockledge they probably may have been right? yeah I mean I wasn't there pre Tracy so I'm not sure how the you know it was before that but you could tell when you walked in he had a you know a system where yeah people were ready to work and if you weren't ready to work right out the gym and leave, so, w- so what I want to ask you what what are some things that you think you learned um in your first couple of years coaching whether that was at Cocoa Beach or under Tracy at Rockledge um a big thing was the fine line starting to learn to you know switch over from being a kid to being an adult uh-huh. like now you're in charge of other kids futures yeah so I mean and that's a big deal having a parent trusting a young coach is not always easy so kind of the first couple of years was trying to learn how to mature and you know so I've had to make some sacrifices you know instead of being the kids friends now I had to be their coach, be their coach. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had to make some sacrifices and they weren't always fun but if it's something you love doing, you got to make sacrifices. So I had to, you know. And and if it's probably in the best interest yeah, of the kids, exactly which you start so. to realize is. And when you start to realize you're not just, you know, in control of you. Now you're in control of 10, 12 kids. Yeah. And you're in control of their futures. And, you know, I've learned how big of an impact coaches can have on a kid. So you got to be careful what you say, what you teach them, because they carry that on. So if you teach them the wrong thing. They're gonna be like, oh, well, coach taught me that. Yeah. That was blah blah blah, and you don't, you know, you want to put them in the best position possible. So, that's probably the biggest thing I've learned is just that maturing, and sacrificing, making the fine line for the interest of the kids at the end of the day, Sweet. the best interest for them. So, what other um, advantages do you think there are to being a young coach? The first one that pops in my mo- mind, and I know there's old coaches that uh, have this as well, but to me, when you're a young coach, we just have way much way more energy Mm -hmm. than old coaches like a lot of a lot of times there's old coaches that um just think that maybe they don't need to demonstrate or maybe they don't need to explain as much because their coach their uh players that have been in their program maybe their seniors can can run the drill but i think there's still just a benefit to a coach being able to consistently be there and demonstrate drills on the court or um verbally talk just at a high energy um throughout a practice right and i think that's one thing that young coaches have what else do you think well, that was I was gonna actually just say that too is just you know energy like you know we can either hop in a drill and if we want them to go harder we could still keep up with the kids and oh, yeah. push them we to can go play. harder yeah and that helps too and you know the energy thing I learned from coach Holmes that man is insane oh, yeah. on the court so watching him coach <laughs> and I kind of picked up on some of that it's like it that feeds to your kids you know if they're like well if he can do it and you know we can too so the energy I think that's a big one too it's you know being able to get out there and get involved with the kids I think is a big thing too because a lot of times like you said older coaches just sit on the sideline they know what to do in their head but they don't really know how to express it so much so exactly us no, being able it, to go out there I think it's really good too for sure and touching back on what you said the us being younger we just relate to them kind of it, how we talk if that makes sense right like maybe the you said it's not the what you say, it's how you say mm-hmm. things, right? And so maybe we just are a little bit more in the now to say things in a way that relates to them at times, right? Yeah, it's just easier. I mean, like I said, I've learned that the first couple of years, I would just scream at kids, scream at kids, scream at kids, to get and thinking that was going to get them to do stuff. And uh-huh. then I realized, like, you know, it's how you say it. So yeah. then I started, you know, using different tones and different ways of saying things, and that's kind of where the big learning curve is. You can't just scream at a kid. I remember always growing up, I was like, you know what? I'm going to one day have an AAU team and just scream at kids and make them run suicide. <laughs> and then next thing you know, I had my own team, and that's what I tried doing, and it didn't work. And uh, so that was a big adjustment. It's just, you know, I like I said, I like to treat my kids like adults. And so do you think there's never a time to yell at kids, or what are your thoughts on that? You definitely, there's times where you have to yell at them, especially being younger. Sometimes you do have to remind them that you are in charge, even though that you are, 
you know, sometimes trying to have fun with them or hang out with them and, you know, be cool with them. But sometimes you do have to put your foot down and make them remember that you're in charge. Uh -huh. So that's kind of the little iffy advantage, disadvantage part right there, too. So I think there are times where you have to yell at them. I mean, even in, at work, in your life, I mean, people, your boss yells at you when yeah, you do yeah, something yeah. wrong. For so. sure. And, you know, if you do it in the right interest for the kid, then it never it, you got to make them understand that it's for their best interest. You're not just yelling at them for no reason. Yeah. So sometimes it's good to explain why you're yelling at them, too, so that you can teach them. Yell at them and then teach them what they're doing wrong. So that's a big one, too, I think. No, definitely. I, I think uh, for me, I, I only coached as far as real coaching X's and O's goes for the two seasons at McNair. I know. Um, I had Josh as my assistant the first year, and then you were my assistant the second year. And, like, looking back on it, I didn't yell at the kids enough. You know what I mean? Like I remember we had those conversations Yeah, in the you mornings. would tell you yep. would tell me that I got to yell more. And, like, to me, um, I, I agree with you that there is a better way than yelling. But at the same point, I definitely think to get players and just athletes and um, just high-level people to their, to their max potential at times when things are intense, maybe – heat of the game or in practice whatever it is you got to oh yeah you have yeah. to so, there are times yeah i remember getting on you about that sometimes at practice and like, <laughs> man it's okay to yell at him every once in a while but you know i just know you personally so i know how you are outside and you're a chiller cool dude so yeah. it's like you know that's one thing you have to pick up on and i had to too it, it, it was funny i remember those conversations in the morning oh yeah 6 a.m <laughs> practice 6 a.m practices <laughs> so what do you think um uh, makes like a good young coach if there's other young coaches listening to this podcast what advice could you give to them about how to be a good young coach um, do's and don'ts let's get let me get two two to three do's and two to three don'ts do's i would say you know just kind of a cliche, just don't give up. You're going to have a lot of old people telling you, like, you're, you're not going to be good enough doing it or you, you're too young to do it or, you know, those things. I would just say, you know, if it's something you want to do, don't listen to them. You know, perfect your craft your own way. Yeah. Figure out your own way to coach. Take things from multiple different coaches. Watch them. Some are really, you know, screaming and blah, blah, blah. Some are really good at skill training. Just take from everything and put it all together and do, build, kind of build your own Create craft. your own philosophy. That's kind of what Coach Tracy taught me was kind of pick, you know, build your own tr craft in a way uh -huh. and just perfect it. Work on it the way you want it to do. Don't always copy just one thing. Kind of pick from everywhere. And, you know, when I run my practices, I have stuff from when I played from Cocoa Beach, when under Tracy, when I coached at Cocoa oh, Beach. Yeah. I mean, I pick Yeah, you take the little nuggets everywhere. from everywhere, yep. And, you know, that's kind of the big do, I think, is a young coach is if, if you want to do it, do it. Don't, you know, give up. And I'm going to add one thing to that. You said don't give up and don't listen to what other people may say. And what I want to say about that is sometimes people don't verbally say, um, oh, that coach isn't going to make it or whatever, but – Maybe it's just their body language or how they're acting towards you, or maybe they're you, you've heard things through other people, and so you just gotta really stay in your zone and understand yep. if this is for me. I'm of course there's gonna be people that don't like me, right? And there's I don't think there's any single coach out there that everybody likes, right? Yeah. Of course there's gonna be no, the other always a kid that has a bad experience with a coach. Yeah, always a kid, a parent, yes. the other teams, whatever it may be. So you're not gonna be liked by everybody in this mm -hmm. coaching world. Nope. So <laughs> what what other dues do we have for young coaches getting into it? Um, just you know, stay focused like you kinda said and just, you know, keep working at it. Uh like I said, keep learning. Go to camps. Go to uh, that's the one thing I did when I was about 19 and 20s, I, you know, reached out to work at a lot of camps. So I'd go to like breakthrough uh -huh. basketball and travel around the state and go work with them. And, you know, I'd try to pick up on team camps, stuff like that, so I can learn from other people that weren't in just this area. Yeah. Kind of, there's different philosophies in every area. Other than basketball is different in every state. So, you know, that was a big thing is just learn, go explore, go do things by yourself. It's good to isolate yourself. You're not surrounded by distractions and it's good to learn things outside of where you're comfortable. Get be, I always tell my kids, get used to, it's like, oh, I can't even remember the quote now. I used to tell them all the get time. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I tell my kids that all the time because it's what you got to do. You got to learn to, you know, be uncomfortable and find a way to get out of that situation. So, you know, that's big And you thing. level up, yeah. yeah it's, it's the only way you get better. You know, I like to throw my kids at the wolves. And, you know, that was, that was probably the, one of the biggest things I learned from Coach Tracy, too, is, you know, never playing like D2 tournaments, never play D3, never – Always play up. Always play D1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To smacked, show, the, show them the best competition. I mean, if you get beat, you get beat. But uh -huh. show them the best of where they want to be at. So even if you lose, it shows the kid, like, dang, I want to be like them and work a lot. And you understand what there. the standard really is that you need to be working towards. Yep. Yeah. Sweet. 
Any don'ts? Any like things that come to mind that a young coach should not do? Don't be afraid it. to fail. Don't be afraid. I mean, so I like that. You know, yeah. When when I first started coaching straight out of high school, I just did it because one of the parents asked me. And our first tournament, our closest loss was 40 something points. We lost three oh. games by 40 plus points, and I hate losing. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I should actually try to at least try at this. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna at least try. And you know, I failed. I failed. I failed. I lost a lot of tournaments, but. Once I learned a lot more things, and once you get the kids invested, it, it, it turned into I yeah. Won you a can lot only of get better from there, yeah. Won a lot of tournaments. You know, when I coached the Cocoa Beach for middle school, we won our first game in like six years for middle school. They had won a game for like five. Years. I won. I I actually was Cocoa Beach's coach. I forgot to mention that the same year that I was coaching McNair, and I won the first playoff game. Yeah. in a few years yep. for the middle school. So it was. Uh, so we, we both did our part on that. Yep. <laughs> so we won four games that year. We went four and four, and that was the first time Cocoa Beach middle school has won a game in like five years, and. You know, there's little accolades that, you know, you can build off of for sure. Oh, yeah, momentum. Yeah, so it, that's kind of the biggest thing is don't be afraid to fail as a young coach because you're going to. You, you're just – you're young. You're still learning life too. So it's like – Definitely. You know, you're going to learn life and basketball at the same time. So just don't be afraid to fail and just keep going. I mean, you're going to have your lows and you're going to have your highs. So yeah, that's just how life is. <laughs> one, one quote that pops in my head when you say that is there's something – a uh, quote that says something like, once you have all the information – it's too late, meaning the opportunity is gone once you have all the information. So you almost have to start without having all the information, right? And as a young coach or a young trainer, I think that's what it's, – it's a risk that you have to take. Like there's uncertainty, which there is obviously in every area of life, but you don't know um, how to coach. You don't know how to train, and you just got to get into it without having all the information, and you'll pick up little nuggets like you said here and there, and then – Eventually, well, actually, never. You'll you'll never have all the information, never. right? You just keep getting a little bit better, and like you said, working towards perfecting your craft. So, yeah. I Every, think everyone's different. So, oh everyone yeah, everyone has their own style and their own way of doing things. And once you find yours, it's just work on it. Just, oh yeah, you know, trust yourself, trust the process, and just keep going with it. So, love it, love it. So, you, anybody you want to give a shout out to on on this podcast? You got anybody uh, listening on the back end that deserves a shout out? Um, I don't know. Just I guess it's a big thank you for everyone who's been patient with me, who's coached with me, mentored me. Just you know, it's like I said, it's not easy always being with a younger coach. So uh -huh. just you know, having the patience of me learning and stuff like that. All the coaches that have been there for me is has been great so it's you know only up from here is how I look at it so and where do you want to take your coaching career I think the max level that I want to my goal is college because I think just for me personally I think like professional and it's just too much of a business and uh -huh. like I think one of my greatest advantages as a coach is my relationships that I'm able to have with kids and I feel like in college when you you know recruit kids I feel like that's a lot of it is building the trust with the kid so I feel like in college would probably be where I'd best suited for uh -huh. and then I think like I said it's too much of a business you know it's hard to you know trust a kid trust a player trust a player and then trade them next week and it's you know that's it's tough to do so uh that business is just it's too much I think sometimes but college definitely I would love to be and do you want to be like a at a d1 at a d2 d1 is the main goal of course uh -huh. but uh you know I know I got to work at it and got a little bit of time to go but it's all a process so. and what about Head coach or assistant coach? Head coach would be the great the thing. The ultimate goal? Yeah, that's the ultimate goal. I, you know, I, it's pretty cool because, you know, Coach Holmes and I will text every once in a while. Getting a little bit of college taste from him is nice. Every oh, yeah, definitely. While, so. He actually just sent me their scouting report the other day, or not the whole thing, but like an insight into their scouting report for their playoff game. And for those of you who may be listening who don't know who Coach Holmes is, we keep saying his name. Um, his name is Jawan Holmes. He coached at Cocoa Beach High School for, what, a year or two? Two years. Two years, and then um, got offered the assistant job at Florida Tech, which is a Division two school here in Melbourne, Florida. And he's just a great coach. Oh, yeah. Like, I great really person, think he's completely coach. turned around their defense there at Florida Tech. And they had one of the top defenses in the country this year. And then now they just won their first playoff game. I think yeah. they're going into another one. So that's sweet, though. Yeah, being able to get, like, inside into the college world from yeah, guys like that. Yeah, having a good mentor like that definitely helps, too. 100%. And um, hey, so I wrote some things down in my notes, just kind of things that we could touch on as far as young basketball coaches. So maybe give me one highlight of your basketball coaching career so far. Ooh. Is there anything that pops in your head that was like, man, that was like one of my favorite moments? Probably of my it was last summer with my 11th grade team. We, um, 
we were at Disney at a tournament, and we had to play against Ray Allen, was coaching. Oh, you and, told me about that. You showed and, me that uh, picture. That's crazy. We beat him uh -oh. by uh, four points in the championship or in the you game. You beat him. You beat Ray Allen. Ray Allen was coaching. He was the head coach for their team. Oh, he was so coaching his kid, and um, he didn't shake our hands after the game. Oh, so that was a. But then he did get his revenge. He came back and beat us by two in the championship the next day. So that was a little tough. But beating him and. It was pretty cool because my dad met with somebody like two weeks later at the gym, and it was a coach from Jacksonville. And uh -huh. the coach knew me from beating Ray Allen. He's like, oh, I remember watching your kids. So that was pretty cool that someone farther away recognized me, which was pretty cool. So that's probably about the highlight right now, and just learning has been the biggest highlight too. Yeah, Being just continuous to, learning. Oh, I yeah, love that. It's just fun to you know, pick up different. I mean, it's something you love doing, so it's, it's easy. It makes it easy to do. So. They say you'll never work a day in your life if you love your job. Yep, and not wrong either. So you're also like a car salesman, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Sweet. Where's that at? Uh, I'm over at Mike Urban Toyota now, and it's you know it's it's been good. It's That's been why you have that new Tacoma yep, out there. Yep. Uh, I knew uh, something was up. It's uh it's nice. It's fun doing it. It's you know I enjoy talking to people, and it's pretty fun. You get in conversations with people over there and learn different things. Oh, I bet. You're meeting all types of different people. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, Latavius Murray, the NFL running back, just bought a car from us two days ago. No way. Yeah, he came in with his family and everything. Is he's, he from here? Yeah, he's, he, uh, I play pickup with him in Titusville on every Tuesday, every other Tuesday we'll play pickup and he's there. Now that you're saying this, uh, there's somebody... I don't know. Somebody, there's something, some connection that I know him through that I, that I've heard that he's from this area or something. Yep. Yeah, so he's, that's uh, sweet. What he buy? Uh, he bought a Sienna for his family, so a big minivan. Cool. <laughs> he had three kids with him, so that was pretty funny. But yeah, I enjoy it. I love it. It's it's changed my life. The money's been great. And Erdman, you know, last year Erdman sponsored a lot of our tournaments and paid for all of it oh, and yeah. everything. So he's he's a really really good family guy uh -huh. so he's been great for me and it's you know it's it's hard to complain over there so definitely it's been good and they're they're supportive with basketball they let me off when i have tournaments and you know i do my part help with them and they help me and it's a good relationship over there it's oh, like yeah. a second family i mean i'm there 12 hours a day 11 hours yeah a day, yeah yeah so I, I see you spend them most other, of your time with yeah, those people so it's good that i like all of them <laughs> well so if anybody in brevard county needs a car where can they find you at mike Erman toyota every day <laughs> six days a week <laughs> or seven days a week so there we go this podcast is not sponsored by mike Erman toyota <laughs> no. yet yet <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe one day all right, man. Um, Ryan, I think we'll wrap up this episode. Um, is there any final thoughts from you? Uh, I know the majority of the episode was us talking about kind of young coaching, but is, is there any advice that you have or just last thoughts for parents, players, coaches, trainers, any basketball fans, just any of your supporters that may be listening to this? Uh, just don't judge a book by its cover and just don't give up if it's something you really care about. I mean, if you love doing it, do it. And it doesn't matter who says anything differently. If you enjoy it, you'll, you'll find a way to make it work. And, you know, I've done a pretty good job at it now and, you know, I'm making it work when I can. And it's honestly getting into coaching at a young age matured me taught me a lot and it was probably the best decision of my life was getting into it at a young age. Let's so get it. it. Definitely matured and you see a different world when, Absolutely. You, have, when you take care of other kids. So it's a, uh, it's definitely worth it. That's all I got to say. Beautiful. Beautiful. My final thoughts for today is, as always, this is the 90% podcast. So our, um, our conversation today or pretty much any conversation you ever hear us have on this podcast, if you really boil it down, it's 90% mental, right? Being a young coach, that's just mental. You're just a coach, right? The, the age doesn't matter. It's built up in your head. Get out there and coach. If you want to be a coach, go learn, go put in the work, make mistakes, fail, succeed, go through the ups and downs and have some fun. Um, I just want to thank every single person listening to this. Like, follow, subscribe on YouTube, Fast Phenom Training, 90% podcast on all platforms. And shout out to Ryan Shaw. Thank you very much for joining me today, Ryan. Thanks for having me. I appreciate yes, it. Sir, let's get it. We're out. Thank you.